Hey YouTubers, it's JT coming to you from the Great White North, the frozen tundra. So, sorry for the sunglasses, but we got a little bit of snow this weekend, as you can see. And it's a little blinding out here, hence the sunglasses. So, in video number one, we talked about all that I was going to do on this channel. Number two was location, 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 as far as where you're going to restore your car and the tools you need. So, now in video number three, we're going to start tearing down that bad boy step by step and getting you going on that restoration project. So, let's get started. Hey YouTubers, this is JT coming to you once again from the frozen tundra of the United States, Wisconsin, with once again another installment on the restoration of that 1967 GTO. And now we're going to talk about restoring that car. We're going to talk about tearing it down, and then in future videos we're going to continue as far as the completion of your restoration car. Some of the advice I'm about to give you might just save you a whole bunch of time, frustration, work, and money. A little side note. Do not, I repeat, do not think that you can tear apart your car like those TV shows that show a bunch of people tearing apart an old car, cleaning it up, painting it, getting it back all together within a week. First of all, these are professionals that do this for a living and know exactly what they're doing. Secondly, you don't see the behind the scenes scenes where they're putting their parts in possibly some type of organized system or they have tons of other help or they're sending a lot of this stuff out to be done. Remember, there's a lot of editing and cutting that goes into all that restoration to put in a 30 or 60 minute show. The reason I'm mentioning this is because before you start your teardown, I would strongly suggest you get yourself some type of video camera and lots and lots of baggies. The reason for videoing yourself or filming yourself is because you need to video yourself taking off these parts because I can guarantee you down the road, you're going to try to put these parts back together and you're not going to know where they came from unless you have it recorded and you have some type of nice recording system. Remember, this process will take a long time, so when you take off, let's say, a certain bolt from the left quarter panel, I can guarantee you that you won't remember where it came from next year or in two years or three years when you have to put that part back on. The reason for the baggies, and I mean different size baggies, is because you need to label the parts as you're taking them off in front of the camera. I would put them in a baggie, and then label them like A1 or B2 or M33, whatever kind of organizing label system you want to create, you have to do. Then in an organized system, put them away in a large container, in a large storage box, whatever. That way, when you get to them, you'll have them nicely in order and you know where they go. Why do I label them with letters and numbers? Well, if I knew every single name for every single part I'm taking off the car, I'm in the wrong line of work. I should have gone into auto repair service. I'm sure most of you can't name every single car part, so simply label them with a letter and a number in front of the camera. My strategy for lettering went like this. A was for the first day I started out on the car, and B was for the second day, and so on and so on down the alphabet. It helped me know that when I had a bag in my hand, and it was labeled, let's say, C5. That means it was the fifth part I took off on the third day I worked on the car. Hey, I just want to interject something that's really important that I don't think I really touched on too much on the previous videos, and that is, this is an electric ratchet. This is an air ratchet. Now, if you can get these two, I strongly suggest you do so. Taking off all those bolts would have been so much easier had I bought one of these beforehand. That is all. I'll return you to your regular scheduled program. The more organized you can be, the better it will be for you to put it back together. Another suggestion is to upload your videos to a certain file in your computer and rename those uploaded videos of what they contain. That way it's easier to find when you're referring to something when you're putting back together the car. For instance, if you had a video of your fifth day and it was about the front quarter panel, so when you start videoing yourself taking off the parts and explaining to the camera this is what part I have, this is where it came from, so on and so forth, you upload it to your computer and you name that file front quarter panel. It's much easier down the road when you have to put the car back together referring right to that video instead of going through a whole series of videos trying to find that certain video of that quarter panel. Okay, so now that you have your video camera rolling and your baggies, it's time to get working on that car. 
To begin, take the battery off if the car was drivable. This will reduce any kind of problems you're going to have electrically. It won't zap you and it'll just kill all the power from the car. Now, drain the fluids. That would mean the radiator fluid, oil, tranny, and even the windshield washer fluid if there is any. Make sure you have some type of floor diaper on the ground because it's going to get messy draining all those radiator fluids and tranny fluids. Trust me, you think you're going to be good at this and you're not going to make a mess. It's going to happen. Just a side note, when you drain the radiator fluid and unhook the hoses, there will still be some radiator fluid inside the engine. So keep that floor diaper on even after the tranny and engine are taken out. Now, take off the hood. It might be pretty heavy, so you may need a second person to get it off. Work on one side, keep that hood up on its position, go to the other side, take off the bolts on that, and either you or you and somebody take off the hood. Then you can take off the trunk and the doors. If you have the room, lay the hood and the doors and the trunk on their sides. If you put them on their edges, you might damage the edges and your body shop guy or yourself are not going to be happy campers when you see those dents there on the edges because of you. Okay, so now that we have those off, it's time to work on the front end. Carefully record what you're taking off because there's a lot of bolts on this thing. So label them in front of the camera, place them in organized manner, and start taking off all the bolts from the front fender, the front clip, the bumper, and the quarter panels. So this means unhooking all the attachments to the radiator and get that thing out. Then work on the bumper. It's going to be heavy, so if you're alone, place your car jack on one end of the bumper while taking off the bolts on the other end. Otherwise, the bumper will fall down and you've just lost a really good bumper that you might be able to use, and they don't come cheap. Next, what you want to do is detach the front end completely off of the car so you can get to the front quarter panels. Take the quarter panels off first so that you have lots of room to get the engine out. Remember that your antenna is attached to your radio, so detach that before your panels come off. When you get to the quarter panels to take the bolts off, it's best to do the bottoms first and then the top ones because then you're still hanging on to the quarter panel as you're taking those bolts off. You don't want to take that last bolt off and have the quarter panel bang on the floor. Not a good thing. The inner wheel well cover will come off with or without the quarter panel. To ease some weight off of the removal, you could take off that wheel well cover first and then get the quarter panels off. Once the front quarters are off, it's time to get the engine out of there. You want to get the engine out because if you're having the engine done by somebody else, you can still work on the car, stripping that down, while the engine is out by somebody having that redone. It just saves you a lot of time. If you are getting your engine completely rebuilt, it's not important to label all those parts from the engine as you're stripping it down because, let me give you another hint, Strip that engine down to the bare block if you're going to have it completely rebuilt. Don't have anybody else do it. I mean, you're going to pay them, so why pay them to strip it down when you can easily do that? Once your engine is stripped down to the bare bones, get it out to the rebuilder. He can work on the engine whenever he can get to it while you're working on the car. Saves a lot of time. Be careful when you get the distributor shaft out. I thought it would simply just pull out, but it doesn't. For those novices like myself, just let me know. For those of you that knew this already, just bypass. Next, now getting back to the engine removal. It's not going to be a piece of cake, to say the least. It's attached to a lot of parts, like the tranny and the frame and a whole lot of wires and hoses. So take your time, record what you're doing, and it'll come. Carefully go around the engine and notice all the parts hooked up to it, like the grounding straps, power steering, heat and cold, hoses, and you name it. You're going to try to pull that engine out, and it's going to be stuck on something, and you're going to have to go back and see what's going on. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to try to pull it out again. For those of us who have done this before, you're not going to have any problems, but I'm just letting you know. If you're new at this and you're trying to pull that engine and tranny out, relax. It'll come. Again, if you have things like the exhaust that are rusted onto this thing and you're rebuilding the engine, just cut it with a Sawzall or whatever sharp tool you have. Get the exhaust system off of there. Don't worry about taking off the little bolts to it because you're going to ruin it anyway. So it's a lot easier for you. Let me give you a little word of advice. Take your car's ID tag that's on the firewall and carefully take it off and keep it in a safe place. If it gets lost or stolen, you can get it through a website, I believe they're in England, but it's like 250 bucks to get a new one. Yeah, that's a lot of cash for a little plate. And it's an important piece of your car because it's car's identification. So take it off yourself before it goes to the body shop, if it's going to the body shop, or even if it's not, take the plate off, keep it in a safe place. 
At the very least, remember to take a lot of pictures of it in case you forget to remove it and it does get lost or stolen or ruined or whatever. Some people that are watching this video know why I'm mentioning this. Here's another little something to think about. Your heater and or your air conditioning. If you're restoring your car to the original specs, then obviously you want those back in. But in my case, it's a resto mod. I knew I didn't really need to count on the heating and the cooling too much because I was going to take the shows. I was going to do a little cruising in it during the summer, spring, early fall months. And I knew the heat from the engine was going to keep me nice and warm in the cabin. And during the summer, if it got a little too hot, I rolled down the windows. So did I really need all that tubing and all that headache on top of that monster engine for heating and cooling my car? No, I don't have it in there. Believe it or not, you can do that. So think about it. Just saying. Remember, we're in Wisconsin where it's cold nine out of 10 freaking months of the year. It's not like we have a lot of driving time up here. So if you don't have that in, as far as your dash goes, you can put other things in there, like an eight track player. Ah. The eight track for you youngins that don't even know what I'm talking about. That was a little thing that we had in the dash that used to play music and it was awesome. Well, you really couldn't backtrack to play another song. You had to wait till it went through the track, but it's an eight track player. It's cool, especially on a resto or a classic car. Now that you have your engine bolts off and you've looked it over and there's nothing connected to it, take the carb off and hook your engine hoist plate to the carb base where the carb was. And remember to use good grade 8 bolts. Don't chintz on 5 or just store-bought cheap bolts. Get the good stuff just in case. Now that you have that engine out, you need to lay it down somewhere so you can detach the tranny from the engine. Again, don't break your back doing this solo. I did, but that's because I'm stubborn and not so bright sometimes. Once you take the tranny off, you might get a little tranny fluid coming out, so be prepared with another floor diaper. Again, I suggest if you're going to have the tranny rebuilt, Get it out because it might take a while before that person who's rebuilding your tranny can actually get to it. So get it out there as soon as possible. Again, you're working on the car, they're working on the tranny, and hopefully everything will come back together down the road as far as timing. So the engine is out, your panels are off. Next, it's time to dismantle the interior. Start with the steering column so it's out of your way. It's held on by bolts on the firewall and also underneath the dash. So you take those off, slide the steering column out. It's going to be connected also by some wires that go to your dash. Disconnect that, obviously, and pull out the steering column. Now get the dash out and the glove compartment and start removing the wiring. Don't bother labeling the wiring like I did because I pretty much can tell you you're going to need new wiring. And it's no big deal. It's inexpensive. They're beautifully labeled. They're nicely color-coded. You're going to want new wiring. So just take all that wiring, rip it out. Don't worry about it. If you need an experienced person to redo your wiring of your car, go for it. It's well worth it. And get somebody that takes the wires and actually lines them and labels them, covers them from heat, have them do a really nice professional job because you're going to love it in the end. Now, you've got all that out. Everything's pretty much cleaned on your car and it looks great, except it's really rusty. You didn't realize it before, but it is. So now you're going to take it to a body shop and what they're probably going to do is send it out to a company that takes a liquid vat, dips your body into it, and it destroys all the rust and everything else except metal. So what that means is you need to get everything off your car. You think you stripped it down and it looks great, but you got to relook at it and think, are all the rubber trimmings off? Are all of the plastic pieces off? Are all the carpeting pieces out? Everything that is not metal is going to be sucked up by this vat. So the best thing to do is make sure this car is completely done. If you don't, that body shop's going to do it for you, but they're going to charge you 80 to 100 bucks an hour to do so. Don't let them do that. Do it yourself. Okay, so now you have the car completely stripped down and you're ready to either have the car worked on by professionals or you're going to do it yourself. If you're going to send it out and have it done by professionals, you're going to need a trailer and a truck and schedule an appointment for them to work on it. Remember, schedule it ahead of time because they're not going to be ready for you right away. I've talked to body shops and asked them when they could work on my car and they've told me like they're 6 to 8 to 12 months out in advance. Okay, so now you need to get the body off of the frame. So you can work on the frame and the body shop can work on the body. Or you can just send the whole thing to the body shop and just say, here, do it. In my case, I took the body off, gave it to the body shop and the frame I worked on myself. So how do you get that body off of the frame? I did it all by myself and I'll show you in the next video how that happened. It's really cool. So until then, take care, God bless, and I'll see you soon.